Okay, everybody, so uh, we're going to keep going with the standard operating procedure. So now we're getting to the portion uh, talking about you know selecting archetypes uh, and template models. Now, again, this is very controversial. You know, um, if you ask different people whether they use previous models or not, you will get you know very different answers. Um, I just find that you know using archetypes in the template models actually help the novice modeler. Uh, just to start with something, uh, at least to, at the minimum, to, to, to have some ideas in terms of how to model the phenomenon. So, what we're going to do now is to explore three different sources from which you can get either an idea or, you know, some initial structure to model your, uh, your model. So, just, you know, going back, uh, you know, what we mentioned before is that we were looking at a model where, uh, you know, we basically had mice, uh, we had mice, uh, that were growing, with unrestricted food, food but in limited space. Now this is the typical uh, condition for a cage, right? So you know you provide as much uh, food as you know the mice want, but you know they can only grow so much because you know there's limited space. What we know from um, from uh, biology is that as the situation starts getting crowded, their rate of reproduction goes down. Okay, so where can we find a model, uh, an example that would be something like this? Well, the first step, or the first source that the the uh, uh, SFP mentions is this uh, archetype. So let's take a look at what that means. Basically, the archetypes are a standard way of um, thinking about some of the most common uh, uh, structures in uh, um, uh, system dynamics that cause a given type of behavior. So again. If you go over here, you know, there's a number of different uh, 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 previous archetypes. I'm just going to jump through, well, there's accidental adver uh, adversaries, uh, balancing loop, drifting goals. But basically, I I'm going to tell you that, you know, already knowing this, you know, maybe at some other point, you know, we're just going to go over all the, the, the different archetypes. Uh, and their corresponding uh, behavior patterns. Uh, but for this example, basically, you know, we're going to be looking at something called a balancing loop archetype. So in the description, it says that attempts to move some current state of a desired reference to some action. Basically, it has a balance, okay? So as a balance, it basically does the following. It starts growing. And it seems like, you know, it's never going to stop to grow, but then it reaches a balance, and then it stops growing, it reaches a plateau. So it basically has three phases, if you will. A first phase of a slow growth, then an accelerated growth, and then a plateau. And this is kind of, you know, what we're looking for, uh, you know, if we're thinking in terms of mice. So, basically in this phase, you know, you only have a few mice. So, you know, the number of mice is, uh, and this is fine, and this is the number of mice. So in the beginning, they are growing slowly, uh, because there's not a lot of them. Then they grow really fast. And then at this point, or maybe somewhere around here, but here more pronouncedly, uh, you, um, you know, the space restriction starts kicking in. Uh, and then they no longer grow uh, in terms of numbers. You know, their number of mice actually remains stable uh, because, you know, they don't have any more space to grow. So, you know, basically this uh, archetype would give you an idea of what it takes in terms of structure to build something like this. So you have to have a balancing loop, uh, which means that there is a... 
I was clicking on the wrong button. Now it's not going to show up again. So um, took me two videos to 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 figure this out. That's okay. So uh, basically, you uh, you know you have a negative influence. Uh, in, uh, uh, and this is basically you know this is going to come uh, from what we call the desired state. So this variable here, desired state, later we're going to see. Uh, it's basically a way of restricting the growth of the the the, the mice uh, based on an assumption uh, on the relationship between number of mice and space. Okay, but we're going to see this in detail later on. So this basically would be the first way of trying to find you know, previous events. The second uh, uh, possibility is to use what we call uh, molecules. Now the molecules. There's a, you know there's a lot of there's a, a story and actually a very good paper about the molecules. But the molecules uh, was a collection of patterns, structural patterns, uh, put together by an outstanding uh, system dynamics modeler called Jim Hines. Uh, so Jim uh, has put together this collection of uh, uh, models. I'm going to show you what that looks like here. I have already preloaded this. Just so that you can see. Well, uh, I don't know if it's going to be too easy to see this. But there's a number of different uh, models here. Okay. So basically, uh, uh, this makes use of what Jensen calls uh, views. So every time you click on a different model, uh, you end up getting the structure for that model. So this is very handy. Uh, so Jim Hines did a lot of work uh, to put this together. Uh, he consulted a lot of different papers and books. Uh, and this is an amazing resource. So basically what you can do is you click on one of these, grab the model, and then transport to your model. So this is another very good way of actually finding uh, pre-existing models. Now, let's get rid of this. And then the third way is actually to find previous models. Now, the way of finding previous models that I find most useful is to go to the System Dynamics uh, download page for their reference and then download the, either their text file or their endnote file. Now, what you have here is an extremely good and large uh, database with all sorts of uh, uh, you know previous uh, uh, papers using system dynamics, and then you can search by title, you can search by uh, text, uh, and you look for the paper that's the most appropriate for you. Okay. Now, what I have done is that I have used a model. Yes. Oops. So you can again see again. But uh, instead of going through the library, what I have done is that I have cheated. And uh, I have used the model that's already available uh, within Gensim. And this is basically the, the model that Gensim uh, has uh, is preloaded. So basically, as you can see here, there's a stock, which is mice. Um, there is a limiting factor here which is the effect of the density on survival. Uh, and this is basically what provides the negative feedback. So if you look at this balance here, this is the negative uh, feedback or the balance. So basically it's a negative because, you know, as the number of mice increase, after a certain point, later on we're going to see this, uh, the number of mice starts decreasing. Uh, how, can, how do I know this? Well, basically if I click, on the effect of, um, just do that again. If you look at that variable, here, let me just do it down here for a sec. On the effect of density on survival function, and basically what I did was to click on the, the equation button, and then um, click on the effect of density. 
If I come here and I click as a graph, it basically shows me that, um, you know, as I start increasing the input, which is the x variable, so the x variable is reported in this x axis. Uh, so you start with zero mics and then you start going up and up and up. So you go from zero to four. So here is zero and here is four. Uh, then the number of uh, the, the, the potential growth of the mice starts decreasing. So uh, the output, which is the growth factor, uh, you know, will go from three all the way down to zero. Now, this is the balancing loop. And then there's another loop here, which is mice create new mice, which then, uh, you know, adds to the pool of mice. Now, as you can see here, this little thing here, it took me a while to figure this out in system dynamics. But basically, this means a snowball. So this is a balance, and this is a snowball. Now, what the snowball says, is that uh, you know there's a positive feedback? Of course, if you have like mice, they uh, reproduce and generate new mice, and then it uh, you know adds to the pool of mice. So basically, what you have here is a positive feedback and a negative feedback, and this will actually explain why you have this growth. So let me snap that back. Try to put the two side by side. So basically, in this stage here, all the way up to say here, uh, the the number of mice is actually increasing, right? So uh, you know this is where the positive feedback is kicking in in this entire portion of the model. But then, uh, you know, once it reaches a certain number of mice, that graphic that I showed you starts kicking in. And basically, from here on, the negative feedback starts, uh, you know, kicking in. And then, you know, you understand why this is called a balance, primarily because it balances uh, the growth of mice. So basically, you know, we went through, you know, the three possible sources of uh, previous models for your model. Uh, the principles are always start with a simple structure and then add complexity. So for a model like this, you might, for example, assume that, you know, their food is going to run out uh, or something else is going to happen. Uh, but start with a fairly simple model. And uh, number three, keep the model uh, endogenous. Uh, basically, what that means uh, is simply that, uh, and this is a, 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 a widespread belief in, in system dynamics, that usually the components within the system will explain the growth or the behavior of the model. So, for example, when I run this model, uh, so basically I just ran this by clicking on the little guy here, then I click on this variable, and I click on uh, the graphic. And it generates a graphic for me, which is exactly what I expected, right? In the beginning, a little growth, then it grows fast, and then it reaches a plateau. Uh, basically, you know, the endogeneity here comes from this behavior that I have hypothesized uh, can be explained just by oops, by uh, uh, these variables, right? I don't need anything else. I don't need like sun or I don't need like, you know, the researcher observing the mice or anything like that. So basically this is what we had for now. Uh, next time we're going to get into model validation.